Hey everybody, hey, hey, hey. This is Fresh Baked Manna Live with Melva Henderson. I'm in a hotel today and uh, wanting to do what I can to still, you know, do our thing in the mornings, just honoring God and giving God honor for the things that he's done in my life. And uh, welcome, want to just welcome all of you. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Yesterday I was having some challenges with uh, Wi-Fi and, and just bringing everything on. But good morning to all of you that uh, you've just been so faithful to join us here on Fresh Baked Manor. This is Fresh Baked Manor Live. My name is Melva Henderson. And it is my privilege to be able to share with you every morning God's Word. A lot of noise going on around me. I tried to find a quiet place, but I couldn't. And so there are people behind me speaking Spanish and a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of movement. But hopefully you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. You know, I want to talk to you all today about uh, failure and how failure it is a critical part. Hey, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Let me see who's out here. Hey, Patricia. Good morning. Good morning, Yvette, Nakomi. Good morning, Patricia. Those that usually join me live on uh, YouTube, I can't do both YouTube for some reason. I haven't learned how to master all of this stuff. So I'm still learning how to utilize all of this. But um, this morning I want to talk about failure and how do we get ourselves past those moments when we feel like a failure because all of us there's not one of us that have ever lived to do something great for God and didn't find ourselves faced with some measure of what we consider to be failure but I love what my husband said he said that we don't lose we learn and throughout life you're going to find yourself in a lot of situations where you're going to have to take an L where you're going to have to take a learning and not a losing but a learning. And so God has great things in store for your life. And in order for you to get where he's called you to be, it's important for you to realize that you're going to have to push yourself many times past all of the uh, fears of failure and those moments where you may have stepped out to do something and it didn't work the way you wanted it to work. You know, I'll tell you all that there are many things that I've wanted to do that I thought would, was going to really push my life to the next level and I stepped out to do it only to fall flat on my face. You know, one of those things is my recording. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, uh, 34 years ago, I've shared this with you all, but 34 years ago, I stepped out to do some recording and when I got into the studio, uh, the producer that was in the studio with me, he said to one of the other guys, I thought she could sing. And what he was implying was that I couldn't sing because I didn't do uh, the traditional black gospel sound. And so they were looking for somebody for a gospel singer. And I was more of a contemporary artist. And uh, now we're talking 34, 35 years ago. And so I overheard him saying, I thought she could sing, indicating I couldn't sing. And so I left Nashville really with my tail tucked between my legs and saying, I'll never go back. And not only that, I shared with you all that somebody said to me, why are you doing that kind of music? There's so many, why are you doing that kind of music? And it was just discouragement after discouragement. And so I set it down with intent never to pick it up again. And so what happened over the years, all of these negative thoughts, you know, about my life, about uh, the enemy and, and, and what I can do, what I can't do, all of that stuff, I ended up pushing away from what I believe that God wanted me to do. And so you think about your life. What are some of the things that God has asked of you that you pulled away from because when you first stepped out to do it, it didn't go the way you wanted it to go? It wasn't like you thought it was going to be. It was harder than you thought it was going to be. I'm going to tell you, anytime you start putting your dream to the test, it is going to be tested. It doesn't matter what it is that you feel like you're called to do or how you feel like you're called to do it. Everything is going to be tested. One, to see if you're really committed to it, to see if you're really sold out for it. And in those moments, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have anybody speaking into my life. And so consequently, when I made, went to, to do it, I, I didn't get a chance to because my thoughts overwhelmed me. Well, I won't say I didn't get a chance to. The opportunity was there, but I didn't step into it 
because the words of failure were speaking to me louder than the words of success. And so I viewed myself through the lens of failure. And every time I started thinking about singing, I would get around people who could sing like Mark Harris and Phoebe Hines and, and Arlene Newsom. Arlene, I see you. Shout out to you. But all of the people that I grew up listening to were people that were, had come up in, 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 in the church with me. I valued them and I loved them. And when I looked at them, my thoughts were, they can sing, but I can't sing. They said, I can't sing. I don't do well. And so I backed away from it. And so when I would be in places and people would ask me to sing, I would say, I don't do that. If I would be invited to a wedding to sing at a wedding, I would say, I don't do that. Why? Because fear and failure were talking to me. And they got a hold of my mind. And consequently, they began to govern my life. And because they were governing my life, I didn't do what I desired to do. For 34 years, I stepped away from something that my heart really longed to do. That's what fear, a fear of failure will do in your life. And so I don't care what you've been through. I don't care who said something to you. If it's in your heart to do it, buckle up and recognize that there is going to be opportunities to fail, to falter, to, 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 hear, to hear negativity. Somebody's going to say something negative to you. And if you listen to them, you will never achieve what it is that's in your heart to achieve. And so what do we have to do? We have to learn to push past what they say. They get on my nerve, just period, point blank. Whoever they might be, they get on my nerve because they don't get it. They don't realize that there's power in their words. And when they speak, they say things that can, can, you know, that can cause damage. I heard somebody say many years ago, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will cause permanent damage. And there are many of us who refuse to step up, to get up, because somebody said something that we didn't like. And so because they said something that we didn't like, we now feel like we can't move our lives into the next phase. Yes, you can. But you're going to have to move past their words. Because their words, God, his words are greater. God's words are greater than their words. And if you can pick your life up and you realize that there's great value in me, there's, there's a lot that God has invested in me. And even though I may have stepped in one direction and that direction didn't serve me or that direction didn't work for me, it doesn't mean that there aren't directions and places that you have not been called to be. Every place isn't for you, and that's okay. But what you want to do is you want to find the places that are because there is some place. God would never have put his plan, his purpose in your heart, and in your life if there was no place to, to, to uh, plant it or to land it. And so, yes, what does he say? What does God say? That's what you want to pay attention to, not what man says, and not even what you say to yourself sometimes, because we can have self-limiting thoughts. We can have self-destroying thoughts, purpose-destroying thoughts. We can say things about, I'm not this, I'm not good enough. I did that. All of that garbage that we begin to feed ourselves, and as you feed yourself that garbage, what you will find, you all, is that then you're going to have to live in the fruit of your words. And so it's one thing for somebody to say something to you that's negative, but it's a whole different animal when you start speaking negatively to yourself and about yourself. God never intended for you to do that. And I'm telling you, you will never rise above the level of your confession. And so whatever it is that you're saying about yourself, you will never rise above the level of your confession. And so if you're saying things about yourself that's sabotaging where you're trying to go, put a muzzle over your mouth and change it. And if you've been saying those things, look around you because the sum total of your life is what you've been saying. It's what you've been saying, not what somebody else has been saying. It's the sum total and what you've been believing. If somebody else spoke into your life and you're living in the fruit of what they said, it's because you believe them. You believe them. And so the key is to uproot what they say. It's to uproot the negative things that somebody else may say about your life because the strongest voice in your life is the voice of God. His voice is the voice that you want to be listening to, not some voice of some negative person that doesn't understand where you're going, that doesn't get it, that can't see the totality of God's plan for your life. You want to go to God because he knows the beginning and the ending of your life. He knows where it is that you're supposed to be. And so your mission in life should be to get yourself where God called you to be. 
He knows what he's doing. He's the one that called you. He's the one that's going to get you from point A to point B. So don't pay attention to anybody else's life. And so if you've messed up, I love what Stephen Robertson says, if you mess up, make up, but never give up. So maybe you've made a mistake and you've put your dreams and your desires on the shelf. You've walked away from it and you said, I'm not going to even try it again because I've had failure after failure. No, you've had lesson after lesson after lesson. And so go back, try it again. What you've done is you found all the ways that did not work. That's what you found. You found all the ways that didn't work, and that's okay. And so now we're going to keep, we're going to keep turning the knob. We're going to keep turning the doors until one of those doors opens, and then we can see the truth and the reality that God has blessed me. God has gifted me, and I'm going somewhere with what God has given me. Why? Because he's the one that's endowed me with the power to prosper. It's not up to anybody else to make this happen. It's up to you. This is your life. This is your journey. And so don't put it in. Don't put that kind of power in somebody else's hands. Never put your power, the power of your life in somebody else's hands. What are they going to do with it? Right? What are they going to do with it? You don't know what to do with my life. You weren't designed to manage my life. You were designed to manage your life. And so because you were designed to manage your life, then you don't need to be speaking into my life unless you've got something powerful to say and unless you've got something powerful to encourage me and move me forward. But if the words that you have to speak to me are not going to increase me, I ain't trying to hear you, right? And so what we're doing is we're moving ourselves into a place where the people that get to speak into my life are the people that have earned that right. And even if there has to come a level and a manifestation of, or a level of correction, even if I need correcting, you can correct me. I'm okay with you correcting me. But you have had to have earned that right to bring correction to my life. And if you don't have anything powerful to say, then you don't get to speak. And so what am I saying to you? Maybe you've made a mistake. Maybe things messed up. Maybe you've you've blown your bank account, every dime in your bank account. Maybe you shopped it away when you should have been investing it. Maybe you've done something wrong with your kids, said the wrong things to your children, or just just, just didn't do things right. You know what? There's grace for you. There's mercy for you. There's another opportunity for you. There's a do-over for you. So grab your life. Pick it up. Don't stay where you are. Realize that God has a thousand ways to get you where you're supposed to be. And that one mistake does not define you. That one mistake, that one falling, get up. Pick yourself up. Pick your life up. Because God is waiting for you. And not only that, there are people that are waiting for you to step over into the fullness of God's plan and God's purpose for your life. Come on, get up. Yeah, you messed up. Yep, you did. Own it. Do what you need to do, but keep walking because the glory of God, the plan of God is still waiting for you. You may have stepped away from God's plan and God's purpose for your life, but it never stepped away from you. And so it's just a decision. Make the decision to go back, get back on your square, get yourself back where you're supposed to be because can't nobody do what you've been called to do but you. And I, I'm so thankful to God for that, that you can't fulfill my plan. Tangela, I can't fulfill your plan. Carmen, I can't fulfill your plan. Arlene, I can't do it for you. Cynthia, I can't do it for you. What I can do is I can encourage you, but you got to do this. And so today, take every step that you're going to take and see that it's a step of purpose. Everything that you do today is on purpose. I'm living an intentional life. And every step that I make, I'm stepping into the fullness of the purpose of God for my life. Today is one of my days of destiny, and I'm going to live it to the fullest. Today is going to be a John 10, 10 day for me. I'm going to live life in abundance to the full until it overflows, because that's the kind of life I was created to live. God created me to live that kind of life, and I'm not going to settle for anything less. Let that be your confession. I'm, I'm sorry. Let... Don't settle for anything less. Let that be your confession and let that be the journey that you choose to walk in today. It's a journey where God guides you. He leads you and he shows you. How do I bring everything together, Father? 
You don't have to worry about it. He's going to show you. I love you guys. Have a great day. This has been Fresh Baked Man Alive with Melva Henderson. I'm traveling, so I'm all over the place, you all. And so grateful to God for all that he's doing. And so we will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day praying for you. I believe in you. That's why I come out every day, because I believe in you. And so if nobody tells you today, you're great, you're powerful, you're powerful, you're wonderful, and greatness is on the inside of you. Love you all. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.